This is Lecture 9 on the FOA series on fiber optics. This lecture covers fiber optic network design, Part 1, an introduction. Fiber optic network design is a specialized process that is completed prior to the installation of a network to incorporate requirements for the communication needs of the user where the cable plant will be routed, what performance the cable plant will have to have, what components need to be used to build it, what are the installation processes that will be used, what needs to be tested, and what needs to be documented when the network is finished. Fiber optic network design involves working with lots of different people, the network owners and managers, architects and engineers who may be in charge of large construction projects, licensed contractors who will be doing the work, consultants who will be designing various aspects of the systems that include communications, manufacturers who supply the products, and distributors who buy the product and deliver it to the site. Who knows how many other people may be involved, but all their inputs are required in order to produce a good design for a fiber optic network. Fiber optic network design requires the people who do the design work have an in-depth knowledge of topics like fiber optic components and systems, fiber optic installation processes, appropriate standards and local codes and regulations. In fact, sometimes the most important thing is that you know the local legal requirements before you undertake any installation project. The end product of a fiber optic network design is a series of documents that define the network project and describe it for others. A scope of work is a complete overview of the project, generally done as an internal document for planning purposes. A request for proposal will go out to outsiders like contractors to get their ideas on how the design should proceed. A request for quote is pricing from a contractor on exactly the project that you want. And eventually there'll be a contract that will refer to these documents and be the legal document for the contractor who is doing the work. The first part of the fiber optic network design project is planning the network, deciding what communications networks and equipment will be used, how long the links will be, and where they go to, where the cable will be placed, how splices and terminations will be done, and where they will be placed in the final design, what testing is required, what documentation is necessary, what standards are relevant. All of these things must be covered before the actual network design is completed. Once we have a basic idea of what our network is going to be, then we start choosing components. We choose fiber that transmits the communication signals and it must be appropriate for the networks that we're using. The cable would be chosen to protect the fibers in the application environment. Aerial, underground, direct buried, underwater. Splices will be chosen and specified when we join two fibers permanently, concatenating cables. Connectors will be specified so that they will be compatible with the equipment we're using and perhaps hardware that's already installed. And of course the most difficult and largest number of components involved are the hardware that provides the mounting, protection, and all of the containment of all of the cables, connectors, and splices in the system. Once we've defined the system and chosen components, we do a design review. Will the design support the networks that we're planning on running on it? Are the components compatible with each other? We've done a power budget to make sure that the communications equipment we want to use will operate over that network. We've looked at environmental requirements. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, we've decided what permits we need, what inspections will be done, and any other legal requirements of the system. 
With a complete design, we then specify testing requirements. Very often we test cable before installation to make sure it's good before we spend the money to put it in the ground or in the air. Every fiber and every cable should be tested for loss after it's installed, and the loss should be similar to the loss budget calculation we did during the design phase. Outside plant cable installation will usually be tested with an OTDR, especially if they're intermediate splices, because that's the only way we have of proving the splices are good. All of the test information, all of the records from our test are kept for documentation for future troubleshooting, specifically if we have to do res restoration. Next, we write the specs for the cable plant, a complete statement of work so an internal document exists that defines very specifically what we're doing. That can lead to requests for proposals and requests for quotes. We specify the route, the network equipment, the fiber type and connectors, the termination types we'll be using, cable and hardware types, but sometimes we need to allow for alternative suggestions, either from manufacturers or from contractors who bid on the project, because they may have ideas that save us money and make a more efficient system. We specify the max loss based on the loss budget and any other specifications per the customer plans that define the network. Generally, estimating the cost of the project will be done even before it goes out for bids. And the reason is that with an estimate of the cost, it allows the end user or the owner of the network to establish budgets for the project and confirm that bids that it receives are reasonable. For the contractor, it allows preparing a proposal that will allow them to do the network and make a profit. Estimating allows comparisons of alternative designs and allows you to work with vendors to get the best prices and best choices for components. Always you work within the standards and look for multiple vendors because single sourcing any job will always lead to higher prices. The network designer needs access to lots of references while doing the design. They need access to the standards for systems, components, installation, and test that apply to this kind of system, although very often the manufacturers of components can provide better explanations than the standards themselves since they write the standards for their use. Technical resources like the FOA online and printed reference guides, Lenny Lightway's Guide to Fiber Optics, and even the FOA website. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the professional society of fiber optics. For more information on fiber optics and fiber optic network design, go to the FOA website and the FOA reference guide to fiber optics for